Okay, I want you guys to consider what it means to put your mental health in the hands of the psychology industry. On being uh, a male in a female space as a personal investigation into the misandry in modern psychology. Well, yes, uh, women have uh, taken over the psychology field. Women are naturally hostile to men. They they push all the men out, and then they have no respect or or care for their male clients. Not to mention that. Feminism has indoctrinated the field, so we're getting the worst of the worst. Now, this male psychologist is finding out the hard way, something men have really always known. As a male psychotherapist, it feels like shaky bedrock, indeed, to speak about mistreatment perpetrated towards males. It doesn't feel like it. It is. See, this guy can't even say it outright, but it shouldn't. But it is, pal. I feel as one who identifies as male, you are a male, and who has been in the receiving end of mistreatment from being one, thank you for admitting that misandry is real, is my duty to warn against the harm the field is doing to male clinicians and male clients. Wow, both clinicians as well as clients. That's right. It is harmful. The prevailing uh, depiction of psychology of male cl clinicians and men generally is that they are somehow insufficient, non-empathic, biased, and irrelevant. Right. Yeah, male clinicians are irrelevant. In other words, we don't need you subhumans in our field. This stemming from a deficient correction, oh, sorry, correction perspective on males. In other words, you guys didn't weren't taught to know your place. That's what it is. You men come into this field thinking you're our equals. That's what these women are saying. The mere mention of male struggles from a male viewpoint is addressed with a sincere, that's indifference, if they are even addressed at all. Of course, because they don't want to know what you N-words think. Know your place. Just sit there and keep your mouth shut and take orders. These depictions are not just legitimized, but supported outright. Thank you for admitting that. As a result, prejudice towards males in the field of psychology have become commonplace. Yes, they have. And are a seedbed of loneliness in the helping profession. Yeah, you find that it's mostly women. Women don't like men. And they're hostile to men. And so you're all alone. You're by yourself in this field as a man. They turn on the cold and they oust men out little by little. Months, uh, months, uh, almost no men are around, then they work their damage onto their male clients. When I first entered the field, I worked as a resident counselor. It's one of those rare positions of mental health where you can help women, or sorry, help people without your master's or doctorate. While working there, I had a great privilege of working with some of the finest clinicians I've ever met. The finest clinicians that are hostile to you as a guy. They were diligent, thoughtful, and caring. I loved working as a resident counselor. Though at times I did occasionally hear comments from those that were working towards higher degrees that I couldn't shake. One moment sticks with me, a moment that to me simply felt like locker room talk. Dude, there's locker room talk in every career. And yes, women have their locker rooms. This woman said, I can't work with them. She stated my, stated my exasperated colleague. He's just your typical white privileged male. That's what you want to hear from your healthcare workers. She said she had sat down without a second thought to the nature of her venting. And he said, what do you mean? I, I inquired. He's just sexist and homophobic. Sexist just means this guy doesn't know his place. I can't work with men like him. Men like him, I asked. Men who come from privilege, she said. And he said, I come from privilege. Are you able to work with me? I replied, oh, you're different. You're not like him. Yeah, you're one of the good ones, pal. You're one of the guys who know your place. This guy showed up knowing his place. He believes, by the way, when if you read all this article, he, he believes in feminism being good in the past. So this guy knows his place. 
And he still will never be able to come out and say the entire truth. But anyway, it just sounds like, say, some white nationalist saying some black guy, yeah, you're one of the good ones. You know your place. That's the exact same thing. And by the way, he should stated, you are, are privileged and you're more privileged than me than I'll ever be. That's what he should have come back with. Do you enjoy being a male in this field? The clinician asked me. Wary, unsure of how to respond. Why would you be wary, pal? You know, he. if you supposedly approached this uh, field where everyone is equal and, and caring and loving, this guy knows that he's a, a second-class citizen. I said, yeah, it depends on my co-workers, of course, but I'm pretty used to it. I don't know if you've noticed this, but nine times out of ten, when a man is in this field, he's pretty good, she was saying. You know, because there aren't a lot of you. Not There are there are not a lot of men, but there's not a lot of you. There's not a lot of coloreds in our, <laughs> you know, white cl man's club. Yeah, I could see that. I stated feeling awkward. Yeah, uh, men have to earn their positions in life. They aren't handed it to them like you women. So, of course, they're good. Though at some level, I felt proud of being the pretty good minority. The conversation felt like a backhanded compliment, because it was, pal. As the current cultural environment in the field has made this type of dialogue feel loaded. It doesn't feel loaded. It is loaded you know this guy can't come to terms with reality i had come to this therapist on her thoughts regarding a case and somehow we ended up in a conversation about my gender yeah she's hostile towards you pal that's why suddenly it struck me i did not feel like a therapist i was a male therapist and for the record she was female not that that should matter of course she was female and it does matter it does matter because she's hostile to you because she is female and you are male. As the weeks and months went on following this conversation, I wasn't sure if I was safe to speak my mind at work. Yes, he was sure. You were sure it wasn't safe. That's why you're keeping silent. The sinister presence of social anxiety trickled down my back with every passing moment. What if I said the wrong thing? Really? What was the wrong, what would be the wrong thing, pal? He'll reveal it. On one occasion during a group supervision where I was the only male amongst seven female supervisors and eight female pre trainees, a colleague suggested to take on her male client after they had their first conversation. She had told us that this client had asked her for views on feminism during a 15 minute phone call, phone intake. And that he this displayed boundary crossing tendencies towards the session. He isn't asking her anything that personal. What it is is she would have to reveal her hostility towards him as a man, and that's why she's ducking him. This question made her feel uncomfortable. Really, uncomfortable. I thought feminism was about equality. Said no man. Luckily, you know, it should, it should be no, said no man ever. By her account and provided sufficient evidence after a single se session that he was a narcissist or a misogynist after one session. This is what, uh, how women feel about men who stand up for them, their own gender. We're narcissists or we're, or we're misogynists. That's all misogynist means. And a, a guy who doesn't know his place. Trust me, the gender divide is made by women. They don't like us. So they put the division up. After facing the prompting of my supervisor, also a woman, of course, nodding in approval and giving me the sense that this was not a choice, but a wonderful learning opportunity. Giving you a sense that it wasn't a choice. Just leave it at that, pal. I exclaimed in a frenzy, really in a frenzy, no, wait, I disagree with all of you. How do you know he wouldn't get the most benefit from having a safe relationship with a woman? Dude, there's no such thing for a man 
as a safe relationship with a woman. And these women are proving it to you. If I had to, if you, if this man put his mental health in these women's hands, they would destroy his brain. If I had continue, I would have also liked to ask, what is it that you think I can provide him with that you can't? Dude, this is a st stupid question. This, it, these women don't want to have to deal with this guy because they don't like him because he's a guy, because of the sex he was born. That's why they're foisting him onto you. You deal with this subhuman. We can't stand him. The room felt tense and silent for a moment. If there was a cover blown, I had certainly destroyed mine. Really, what was your cover? You covered that you didn't believe that men were terrible? Notice he says nothing about that. I felt, it's always everything's feelings, all right? I felt sense re, uh, regarding the matter was that there wasn't much consideration as to what I could provide the client other than my gender. My colleague appeared to be asking if I could help her out in her own discomfort with a male client. There appeared to be a, no desire for her to hear his core pain or the reason for his behavior. Right, because they, they are hostile to men and if anything, they would like to see men in pain. This is the conclusions this guy can never come to. This is why he's a failure. And a few years back, I noticed a trend in the field of mental health. My colleagues were virtually all women. In fact, I have never seen a primary male supervisor as professional. Yeah, of course. The women are ousting you guys. And as once there's enough of them, they feel safe in showing how they really feel about men. And he tries to give the reasons. I'll, I'll give you this uh, in the description box, and you guys can read the whole thing when you want. And he talks about, especially white men, they talk about ethnic relations, LGBTQ communities. Yeah, it's feminist indoctrinated. That's right. This doctrine is damaging to a sense of self held by male clinicians and male clients and is nothing short of brainwashing in its structure. Okay, so feminism is bad. <clears throat> and he talks, he put toxic masculinity. Yeah, that's what you want. That's what men want in their mental health profession. Uh, uh, people who hate you for the way you were born, right? Exactly. Now, this is... And of course, this is where he shows where that he himself is a failure because he, he believes the feminism was good at one point. Now, I know what the reader must be thinking. Feminism, the equality movement. Well, this isn't your grandmother's feminism. Yes, it is. This is the what you have to come to terms with. This is your grandmother's feminism. Feminism is a hate movement towards men. So he makes excuses for this. They just gotten in power so much that they can now, now fully show. Actually, they've always shown it. Men just have had their heads in the sand. It's just that they're in such power now that men can't ignore it now. That's what it is. This brand of feminism psychology focused on no, all the, they always did that. The there's one brand of feminism: the hatred of men. And the spiral of science, silence. Within the spiral, silencing pressures censors dissenting opinions through several forms of coercion. Once accepted viewpoints are made known to the group, it can be extremely costly to challenge and change them from within, right? Well, if you want to change them from within, buddy, you've got to admit what's going on fully. And you've got to throw away what your views on, on what... Uh, feminist has been right hmm. and he talks about anti-patriarch -pa claim yeah you know the rest of it anyone who wants to know you can read the whole thing i'll put it in the description box thank you